Hey everyone, it's Mike Sullivan. This is MO.com, where we feature small business owners and entrepreneurs and bring you hints, tips, insights, and perspectives on what it takes to be successful. Joining us today is Travis Smith of Lift Division. Lift Division is a search engine marketing and email marketing organization, and Travis is one of our subject matter experts. Travis, great to have you with us today. Can you tell me a little bit about Lift Division? Yeah, sure. Lift Division is a search marketing firm. And uh, um, myself and Jamie Stevens started Lift Division, I guess it was in April of 2010. And so right at a year later, we, uh, we merged with uh, Pure and Brent B. Shore bought our company. And uh, Jamie Stevens continued to do programming and build up his product called Booked. But I, uh, I came on board, board with Pure. And so I run the search team here. And... Uh, Lift Division has maintained its identity, um, but we are definitely a pure company, pure owned. Travis, you have a background in engineering. What made you decide to step away from engineering and into internet marketing? Yeah, that's a good question. And I get that question a lot, like how I went from engineering to marketing. They seem a little bit disconnected, but what I found actually in studying marketing is a lot of the, uh, a lot of the great uh, direct response marketers were former engineers and I think it's because marketing is a, a really good blend of uh, uh, psychology and math and especially online everything is trackable and it's a you know it's a numbers driven game and particularly with search we're dealing with search algorithms and uh, you know so how I got into it was uh, partly boredom and partly interest. So I was, I was never really satisfied with engineering, but I did it for seven years. But, you know, I'd gotten a degree and I just didn't know what else to do. I didn't know how to get out of my situation. Um, engineering is pretty specific and I was kind of locked down. It's not like a, a degree in business or whatever. And <clears throat> my company at the time, our workload was really slow. So I was getting kind of itchy to do something else. And I started studying how to sell things on eBay and just tinkered with it a little bit. This was like 2000-ish, 2001. And then I bought this book, which is one of the reasons I'm really passionate about information marketing because I bought this $40 ebook on how to build a Yahoo store. It was from Andy Jenkins. And the book literally changed my life. It was probably the best $40 I've ever spent because it equipped me to do keyword research, identify a niche, set up uh, pay-per-click ads in Overture at the time. Uh, which was bought by Yahoo, and then build this Yahoo store. And so I didn't really know what to do. I'd never ran a retail store before, but I, I, uh, I grew up riding ATVs, and the market was pretty wide open online at that time. And so I found a guy that would make custom seat covers for me and drop ship them if I just sent him the orders. And that evolved into I ended up with four warehouses across the country that shipped every part basically that an ATV would need. And um, I ran it all out of my house on the side for years, and everything was drop shipped. I never st stocked any product. And then uh, it finally just grew to the point where I, I was kind of forced to quit my job, which is really what I wanted to do anyway. I wanted to get out of engineering, so it worked out well. This is clearly your area of expertise. What are some of the things that small businesses are missing when it comes to internet marketing today? You know, I think they're missing a lot, quite honestly, and specifically, local businesses, main street businesses. Um, it's, it's, the internet's a little bit scary for these businesses, I believe. Um, you know, if you're not in the space every day, keeping up with the blog posts and actually executing strategies, it can be overwhelming. But one of the really cool things that's happened is Google, specifically in the last few years, has made Google Places and local search really frankly easy for um, Main Street businesses to dive into and, and get internet traffic because national SEO, which is what I refer to as basically anything that doesn't produce a map result, okay? So if you're, if you're in that space, search can be very complicated. Um, but anyway, what I think these businesses are missing is just frankly, all of the um, all of the prospects that are looking for them in Google and Yahoo and Bing, but Google obviously has the most market share. So 
by not playing the game, by not getting in there and figuring out what to do, they're really missing out. And I talked to a client the other day. He bought my training course from Google Places, and he told me that that he gets a tremendous amount of business from Google Maps, and actually, um, he gets five to one customers from Google Maps as he does in Google AdWords, which is their paid version of search. But I was actually a little bit shocked by that in, in his local market. But there's a tremendous amount of business there to be gained, and certainly with mobile, you know, people are going to uh, Google more often for local solutions. So, and one more thing I want to say about that too is that uh, email marketing. I think a lot of uh, companies are really missing out on the opportunity to email market. Um, the ability to build an autoresponder sequence and capture a lead and, and attempt to convert that lead into a customer with automated email is one of the best levers that's been created you know, in, in um, probably the history of marketing. Because you build it once, you flip it on, and it runs forever. And um, you know, two, what one or two percent of visitors are going to convert to a customer if you do nothing, but you can turn on an autoresponder sequence and crank that up to maybe five or ten percent. So there's a lot of opportunity there, and, and a lot of small businesses don't do it. And I think this is sort of along the same lines. Tell me about your book, Lift, and what we'll learn as small business owners from reading it. Yeah, so the book, um, I wrote the book in 2010, and it's specifically for Main Street businesses that want to do it yourself approach to local SEO. They want to get traffic, they want to get ranked in Google Places. And I did it for a couple reasons. I'd always, I'd always played in the uh, National Sandbox. And I had a friend come to me, it was a, a, a local insurance agent, and he wanted me to help him get ranked in the Google Maps. I hadn't done any of that work before, so I had to really dig in and do the research and figure out how the algorithms were different and what we could do to help him. So in that process, what I discovered was it's not that complicated. Um, certainly, it's getting more complicated as time goes on, but it's definitely easier. Google has made it easier for these small businesses. They've really given them... Um, the functionality in Google Places of an entire website. I mean, it would cost probably five thousand, ten thousand dollars, depending on who built it for you. It probably costs that much money to build all of that functionality into your own website, and Google gives it to these businesses for free. But what I learned was it's not that complicated, and so like millions of Main Street businesses are still not playing the game. I mean, there are, there are so many businesses that I encounter in, in the local search space that haven't even claimed their Google Places listing yet. It's not even owner verified. So the competitive landscape is thin in some places, you know, different uh, geographic regions and niches. And so when I discovered that it was relatively easy, I told you earlier I was passionate about information marketing. I wanted to come up with a product that would teach these small businesses, equip them, to leverage it and empower them really for transformation in their online marketing. And also, frankly, I just wanted to uh, learn it better myself, so the best way to do that was dive in and write the book. What are some examples of the industries you've served with internet marketing and what kind of results have you seen? Industries I've served, you know, I've done a lot of work in retail for probably eight years. I've been involved with online retail. and. Um, we serve clients in all kinds of service niches as well. Um, so retail, you know, uh, the medical field, insurance, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, probably one of my favorite case studies to talk about is, is what I did at SoccerPro.com before I started Lift Division. Um, SoccerPro was a really fun ride. We, I was the online marketing director there and we grew the company, we grew the traffic about, <clears throat> excuse me, 800% in 18 months. And it was a fantastic thing to do because we were right in the middle of the recession. And essentially what we did was we just scooped up market share from everyone else with organic SEO. And um, it was phenomenal. It was, it was so much fun and it really got me addicted to search marketing because I saw the power um, of of owning the, the top real estate in Google for a niche. Um, so anyway, that, that's probably my favorite case study, but we serve all kinds of industries, both local and national. 
So I'm constantly getting emails by companies claiming that they can provide me with number one placement in uh, a Google search for my key term. Can anyone guarantee a number one spot in Google? Guarantee? I guess it depends on what their guarantee is. Um, that's a pretty gutsy guarantee, I think. And certainly they could guarantee it or else, and maybe that or else is you don't have to pay them. Although I do know one guy that tried that model, and, and uh, you only had to pay him when you got ranked. And what ended up happening it was he got people ranked and they ended up not paying. So he, he stopped doing that. But, you know, it's difficult to guarantee any position in Google or any other engine. One, is, one reason is that the algorithms are changing probably on a daily basis, I would assume. I mean, if you watch, if you pay attention to Google rankings, they change a lot. They're always testing. Um, you can do a search now and do a search for that same term in five minutes and you'll, you'll likely get different results. So it's difficult to guarantee. Um, what, what I can guarantee clients and, and what I tell people is that I guarantee you'll make progress. I guarantee you will own a majority of the top real estate, okay? If you do all the things that we, um, that we recommend doing. But I, I never guarantee position. It just, and frankly, you know, you could wake up tomorrow, you could be ranked really well. Google, like this year, uh, Google releases the Google Panda update, and some people disappear. So we just don't know what they're going to do. All right, Travis, anything else you'd like to add? You know, I would encourage, um, I would encourage businesses, if they haven't thought about search, to really consider it. Obviously, not every niche um, could benefit from search, but certainly most can. The other thing I would throw out is, if you're considering designing a new website, consider SEO before you do that. I see a lot of companies make the mistake of building a site and then they want to do SEO after it's up. And that's really um, a disadvantage because a lot of the things that you want to do with the site structure, information architecture for SEO could be best done on the, in the design phase. Um, the other thing I would say is if you are a small business, a, a Main Street business, check out my book, my training course. Um, it will help you for sure. Um, every student that I've talked to that's actually done the work has gotten results. So, Hey, Travis, thanks for all the information on in internet marketing. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.